All right, I'd like to talk a little bit about how you actually get paid for writing music for television here in the US. Um, it's different around the world. Um, it's still a little complicated in the US, but I'm gonna try to clear some things up for people new to the industry. I am not a long-term veteran. I've been doing this for five or six years, uh, but I enjoy helping others learn. So this video is kind of targeted at those that are interested in pursuing writing for television, sync music, cues, etc., uh, or maybe you've been doing it for a little while and want to learn a little more about it. So I've created some visuals to help solidify some concepts to understand that you're not gonna get paid very quickly for what you do. So let's take a look at some slides I did here. So first up, let's talk about uh, how you get paid, how the delays and things of that sort work. So I've got some colors and some icons here. There's a couple different PROs uh, performing rights organizations in the U.S. Uh, one is BMI, one is ASCAP. Uh, there's SOCAN for Canada, and there's others, a bunch uh, around the world uh, based on geography, region, etc. So BMI and ASCAP are the big two in the U.S. I'm a member of BMI, so I'm most familiar with that process. Um, so the way that they pay out uh, commissions or royalties uh, is every quarter, every three months in a fiscal uh, calendar quarter. So uh, you'll see here for 2021, Q1 is indicated by the yellow notes, Q2 is the blue notes, three the red notes, four the green notes, and then 2022, it's got some stuff there. So the way it works, for the music that was uh, placed on television in the first three months of 2021, it takes six months roughly to get paid on that. So the stuff from Q1 gets paid out by BMI in September of the same year. Q2 in the blue, April, May, June, your payment for the music that was placed on television those three months will get paid out in the January statement from BMI, BMI the following year. Q3, July, August, September, any uh, music used on television shows in those three months will get paid out in March of the next year. And lastly, Q4, October, November, December, that will get paid out in June of the following year. So there's roughly a six month lag between when your music is placed and when you get paid for it. That's because the music producers and supervisors, they have to do the paperwork every quarter to deliver a list of what they placed so that artists get credit. So they need time to correlate that stuff. Think of it like quarterly taxes. But then once BMI receives the information, they need time to process all that and think about how much music is in the world that they've got to process constantly. Millions and millions, if not billions of tracks around, they have to keep organized and sort uh, and pay people out the best they can. So uh, it, they have uh, a window of about two quarters or six months from when they start receiving the paperwork until they pay it out. So there's about a six month lag from when something is when something appears on television versus when you get paid for it. So that's one aspect of it. So let's just break that down here. Let's assume that you had a piece of music placed on television in February of this year. Librarians, uh, sorry, some supervisors, editors, they may do their paperwork monthly, uh, may do it quarterly. So let's just assume this is quarterly. So your, your music appears on television in February. So at the end of the quarter, hopefully that piece makes it into the quarterly report, which goes to your PRO. So uh, then the PRO has basically six months to get that data, organize it, figure it out, uh, verify it, and then pay you out. And so your step, BMI September statement will give you the money that you earned in Q1 of this year. So that's just once it's been placed. But let's backwards engineer this a bit and think, how long will it take for you to get paid based on your particular composition work style? Let's assume that you've created a piece of music in, you, in March. Maybe it took you a day, maybe it took you a week or a month, maybe it took you all quarter. But you finished a piece of music in March. That's the blue notes there. So then in April, that piece of music is, is selected by a library. You've got an existing relationship or you pitched it to a new library. Maybe you pitched it to a, a supervisor directly. Um, but you've put your music into a library, the most common way to get music on television. Now it's a waiting game. Just because they have it doesn't mean it's going to get placed right away. So you've got to wait for people to choose your music, which means, you know, the music library, their job 
is to pitch music to shows. Uh, they respond to briefs from supervisors and directors, etc. Uh, and, and so they get requests for, we need a bunch of music in this style for this show by this date, or, or they're just looking for more of this style to fill up our gaps. So they have the music catalog and now they're waiting for customers. So you may get lucky and the month that your piece goes into the library or your batch of pieces goes into the library, um, a supervisor hears it, downloads it, and wants to use it right away. But now that they've got it, you have the concept of post-production, uh, which varies widely between shows and movies. Um, sometimes post-production is four or five days. Sometimes it's more likely three or four weeks. So let's say, again, piece created in March, got into a library in April, give the librarian time to gather it, meta tag it, organize it, get it in their catalog, etc. Might not be a month, might be a couple weeks. Depends on how busy they are. Uh, so they get the, in the library in April, and now you just wait. And so in my example here, you see the green check mark in July. A customer says, hey, we like your music. Well, they downloaded it, and they're going to put it into a scene. And let's say that post-production is four weeks. So that show finally airs in August. So your music was selected. It gets placed on television sometime in August. But the... Uh, music editor or the supervisor has the rest of the quarter to do all their paperwork. So they're not going to report that your show, that your piece was used on a show uh, until the end of Q3. That means the PRO has two more quarters to gather and process that information. So October, November, December, January, February, March, you get paid in March of 2023 for the music that you created in March of 2022. That's a year. Now, it can vary widely. It can take, you know, uh, less time to create music. Uh, if you crank something out in a day and it only took the librarian you know, a week to get it inserted into their catalog and someone looked at it that month and you got lucky because it was response to an urgent brief, then maybe we chop a quarter off of that. Um, but uh, sometimes, more realistically, you put your music in the library and it will be there for many months. I have, I've had things selected a year or two years after they were placed in a library. It's really just a matter of what a music supervisor is looking for on any given day. They could be looking for, you know, heavy metal. They could be looking for vocal songs. They could be looking for hip hop beats, action, comedy, etc. It depends on what shows they're doing, what the mood is, etc. So it could be months before your music gets selected. It could happen right away. Um, Post-production time. Some shows is a week, like I said. Sometimes it's three to four weeks. Could be longer. Movies take longer. Um, so it's all a matter of timing. Uh, and again, how much time do you need to create a single track? And there are plenty of libraries that will take single tracks. But you're just putting... It's like getting one lottery ticket versus buying 20 of them. It's like one raffle ticket versus buying 20 of them. Um, you're putting your music in for consideration, but there's lots of competition. So you've got much more chance of success if you work with libraries in batches. Um, a lot of libraries will take minimum of five. Some are saying we only take batches of 10 or more. So think into your work style. If you've got collaborators and, and how you record, if it's on a DAW or if you're using actual studio time, how much time will it take you to create a batch of five or 10 tracks? So put that at the beginning of this timeline, because maybe you're not submitting a single track. You've got to wait until you've got a 10 track project to give to that library. I just got done with a 10 track uh, project with a gu guitar collaborator. It took us three months for a variety of reasons uh, to get that done. And I'm still waiting to hear back from the library if they've accepted it. Because sometimes they'll ask for stuff that, you, that they know you can deliver, but this is a new project, new style, so I'm waiting to hear back if they like it or not. So there's lots of variables that affect how quickly your music uh, will uh, make you some actual money. So it gets to being a volume game. And if you saw my previous video on this, uh, I was talking about a vineyard. You want to you wanna make some money making wine? Well, you got to plant the vines. The vines have to grow. They got to grow grapes. You got to pick the grapes. You got to, you know, stop the grapes. You got to age the grapes, etc. So um, things take time in this industry. This is a business of patience and diligence. Now, a friend said uh, patience is a virtue, but it's not a virtue of mine. I can definitely agree with that. So 
Um, it, it takes a long time to make money. Just understand that going in. Don't think after six months, I'm not making any money. I've got things in libraries. It, it, it could be a long time for you to make any money at this. Uh, so focus on your quantity as well as your quality. Um, and focus on researching shows that are on television today to make sure your sounds are current, your styles are current. Um, it, it's important to stay fresh. Go back and watch shows, take notes, and figure out what they're using, how long the cues are. Go through lots of shows and, and do that to, to see what's popular. Um, librarians cannot determine what's popular. They're responding to the demand of their companies, their music producers, their supervisors, etc. So all you can do is look at what's on TV now and then watch the credits at the end, find out the libraries that provided music for that show if they show it in the credits, and then prepare yourself an online portfolio of music in the style that you're good at and reach out to them and say, hey, I've got some music that sounds like the stuff you use in your show. You know, can you use this? So I hope this video was useful. Just trying to give some beginners some information on what to expect for your efforts that it takes to create a song, get it placed, and then eventually make some money at this. So thanks so much for listening. I appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.